So hi, Microbe Hunter here. I'm getting a lot of questions uh, concerning um, uh, cameras uh, to be connected uh, to a microscope and advice uh, relating to this. And uh, today I got another question and I think it uh, uh, talks about a few interesting points here that I would like to, uh, to answer and I would like to share with you and give you my opinion on this. Much has been said and covered uh, with respect to purchasing microscopes. I have uh, the scope, objective, condensers, filters and a myriad a number of accessories for photomicrography. The next and fundamental question is, what camera do I get? I think um, I would like uh, video capabilities, 4K, voice recording would be cool, and a flip out ver uh, very angle LCD monitor would be critical if I buy an SLR camera. SD cards, USB ports or USB 3.1 Thunderbolt ports, ideal, etc, etc. But what sensor size would be best? The minimum number of pixels? Is a mirror lockup necessary? And once again, so many questions. So far, I have found it impossible to find anyone who is an expert on photomicrography cameras. Nor has anyone answered my pleas in the microbe or microphotography forums. When I ask about cameras, the forums go eerily quiet. If you had to do it all over again, which camera would you purchase today, 22 years later? Or would you still be perfectly happy with your Canon EOS T3i 600D? Thank you for the question and I think this might again be a slightly longer um, answer here. I would like to take my time to go um, in, into those points. But I would like to start off uh, with uh, one of the last uh, comments that you made that um, you have not been very successful in um, obtaining a response from uh, microscopy forums or um, yeah, um, other photography forums. Um, I think the reason is the following, or one of the reasons could be is, is it's very difficult to give a definitive advice because there are so many variables that influence the choice of a camera. And I would say maybe 70% or 50% um, are not objective criteria, but are a question of personal preference and how you weigh individually the importance of the individual factors and uh, for this reason um, I can only share you my opinion here I will be tr I try to give you also some recommendations but then again maybe this is not what makes you happy okay um, after all um, the problem if I may say it like this the problem of microscopy as a hobby is that that there is essentially we're doing it only quote for fun so there are actually no hard objective criteria that we can apply so for example um, if I were in research um, it would be probably easier because I, I'm basically I have to see this structure and if I cannot see this structure that I'm look, researching then the microscope and or the camera are not good enough okay um, so I have objective criteria but when I'm dealing with a hobby issue um, things are a little bit um, flexible here and I think also and that's maybe the positive side and then I'm finished with my intro <laughs> and that's the positive side if you have all of the those problems where you don't know which uh, the choice and all of the technical aspects and what's better and, and advantages and disadvantages all of those things see it positively because if you are now forced to think about these things then you learn a lot um, because I've been through this stuff as well um, so uh, it's uh, the knowledge that I have is also hard-earned knowledge because yeah with many trial and errors okay so but what I would like to do now is, is I want to go through um, your points uh, here and give you my take on it as I understand there are probably going to be a lot of viewers who might disagree with me um, but that is simply because different people have different um, yeah they place a different emphasis on the different parts here okay but in order to help you and to give them an opinion I gotta be a little bit yeah I'm I have to be opinionated here okay but then again I have an open mind to be open for for other feedback here so um, first of all let's go through, through the whole thing here uh, video capabilities I think very important uh, at least also for me because that's one of the points of microscopy also as a hobby you want to see movement um, you want to share also short video clips and if you get a DSLR camera a modern one um, and uh, maybe not one that is uh, from the very old because you still can buy also very old cameras um, for a very good price uh, which work well but uh, sometimes the older cameras that did not have video um, ability or capability yet uh, but actually nowadays um, I would say that uh, a lot of uh, the DSLR cameras also will allow you to do video and then you have the next leads us into the next question HD or full HD or 4k and here I do have an opinion I think that 4k is an overkill uh, for two reasons 
or for several reasons. Number one, the resolution of 4K is more than what a microscope is able to deliver. 4K resolution means that one frame has around eight megapixels. And uh, microscopes, depending on the objective, depending on the adapter and the, the intermediate optics and so on, um, basically, um, yeah, it's around, it's two times as much as you need, okay? Um, so I would say that 4K is an overkill. Of course, it's nice to have. If you have other good reasons to buy a 4K uh, camera because you say, okay, I want to do some high quality video uh, stuff besides the microscope, then please, for, by all means, go for it, okay? Um, but just for the microscope, I would say that it's probably um, too much. Um, you also need a, a, if you want to do 4K video editing, you also need, of course, a, a reasonably strong computer uh, because the data rate is, is very high and all of these things. 4K does have an advantage um, outside of microscopy, for example, if um I don't have a 4K camera, but uh, for, um, I'm talking into the camera and then sometimes maybe I want to crop away the rest of the background and make my face large. If I were to take it in 4K, I can crop in without losing um, any image quality. Um, so uh, folks who are uh, YouTubers uh, who are doing a lot of filming, they will use a lot, of, often they will use 4K um, because they have more flexibility in video editing and then at the end they will only, only quote, upload a full HD video. Um, so it's important for K is for video editing, but I think that for microscopy, um, it's kind of pointless or not so val valid because when you crop in, um, you're not going to, yeah, you might not, you, the microscope doesn't have the resolution in, in, in the first place, okay? So that is, um, I would say that this is um, uh, an issue where I would say that this is a place where you can save money um, if this should be an issue, okay? Um, so the next one, a voice recording would be cool. Um, here again, I'm gonna, uh, if, you, if it's able to do video, then it's able to do voice recording. Um, cameras nowadays uh, have a, a built-in microphone. Um, I'm right now not using a built-in microphone. I'm using a, 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 yeah, a clip-on mic because otherwise uh, for the sound quality. Um, but then again, uh, when you do microscopy over the, um, photography or, or filming over the microscope, um, you, you don't need a high quality uh, voice recording ability in the first place anyway. Um, voice recording, however, I do use because when I take a video, um, I will actually comment for myself. I will comment uh, what I'm actually seeing. So for example, I'm, I'm filming and then I'm saying, okay, I'm now using my four times uh, uh, objective and whatever. Yeah, so I'm kind of, uh, yeah, and I'm, it's a pond water sample. Yeah. Um, so I'm actually making comments for myself, which I then later will remove um, when I make my YouTube videos and then I do a proper voice over, okay? Um, but voice recording is, I think, not an issue because I think all, all cameras that do video should actually have this, with the exception, of course, of dedicated microscope cameras, which you basically directly connect to a computer. Then you just put it in, in, into the eyepiece. Um, and those cameras, they don't have a, a voice or often a microphone because you don't need one because that's not what they're made for. But if you think about getting a DSLR camera or any other camera, then it's already built in. Um, so the next uh, point, um, a flip out uh, LCD monitor would be uh, critical if I buy an SLR camera. I would say nice to have, not critical for the following reason. Now I have a flip out one, okay? Um, but uh, if your uh, DSLR camera has an HDMI connector to it, and many of them have these days, then you can directly, without a computer, you can directly connect the camera to um, a monitor uh, that also has HDMI, and then you can actually see that, what you're able to see on the screen directly on the monitors. And if you buy yourself a small uh, monitor, I don't know, seven inch monitor, for example, um, then you can have it easily stand next to your microscope and then um, yeah, in, right in front of you and I think that might be more convenient. Um, yeah, um, so I would say a flip out um, is, is not absolutely necessary, nice to have. I use it uh, because I kind of look up and then see the flip screen, but I also have a, a, um, a monitor next uh, next to myself where I can, um, yeah, we can also do videos and it's actually much easier and more convenient. So I would say flip out, nice to have, not, not absolutely a necessity. 
okay? So, but HDMI, I would actually look for that, okay? So that kind of leads us all over a little bit to the other thing, SD cards, um, yeah, of course, memory cards, that's clear. USB ports, uh, yeah, they all have this uh, because you want to download the videos. However, um, also here, whether it's 3.1 or 2.0, I think it really does not make a huge difference for myself because the videos are so large anyway that I make that I will take out the card and I go directly to, to the computer to download it because I don't want to, yeah, um, and the computer is also in the other room. Why not, you know, to have a fast USB connector, but it, it's not something that I would actually uh, compare now does it have usb 2 or usb 3.1 or so unless you basically want to maybe directly connect your camera to a computer uh, and maybe record the videos directly into the computer and this could be an interesting thing and then uh, i would uh, actually go for a, a usb 3.0 3.1 Okay, so uh, next one is mirror lockup necessary. A mirror lockup, uh, DSLR cameras, they work like this, that there is a mirror in there. And when you press the shutter release, then uh, there are two mechanical events that have to happen. The mirror has to go up um, and then the shutter has to open. And um, this can cause vibration. And for this reason, DSLR cameras um, have a so-called uh, a mirror lockup function. In the good old days with the mechanical cameras, you had to actually physically flip over a switch yeah, to lock it up. Uh, but these days, over the menu, you can control that or there's a button, button that you push and then the mirror locks up. And this reduces vibration. Um, I've already made another video uh, with several examples of how you can reduce vibration. Um, I would uh, say the following. When you do videos, the mirror lockup function becomes irrelevant because in a DSLR camera, while you are filming, the mirror is locked up anyway. Um, it only becomes an issue if you actually take uh, take photographs, still uh, still photographs. But then here, um, I would say, I, I don't know. You got I cannot imagine a modern DSLR camera that does not have a mirror lockup. Okay, so that is, however, next point. Um, if you say, okay, um, I wanna buy a new camera in any case, um, and it doesn't matter if it's a DSLR, you might also consider mirrorless cam cameras. The mirrorless cameras, they don't have a mirror, that's <laughs> obviously, so there's no need for mirror lockup, um, and uh, they are more compact uh, and smaller. Um, so this is also something that um, I would consider uh, looking into, but I would not really automatically say that this has a huge advantage or disadvantage. Um, generally, when I were to choose a camera, um, I would think about it, would I also use the camera besides my microscope? I mean, if I'm already buying, uh, spending a few hundred euros or dollars uh, to buy a new camera, then I also want this camera to be useful for, yeah, yeah to take regular holiday pictures, okay? So in that sense, um, I would, uh, yeah, and the handling of the camera is also relevant here. So that is uh, the next, so the sensor size. Generally, um, there is a general rule, the larger the sensor, the better. If the reason being that, um, that larger sensors have a much better low light performance. However, um, the APS-C sensor, that's basically the smaller sensor of the DSLR cameras, is good enough in most cases. And um, you can, should not consider the camera independent of the optical system that you use. So you have to make sure that the optics that you use is designed in such a way that the sensor is made, made most use of. Okay, um, in my case, for example, um, there is a little bit of a mismatch. I have a small sensor camera, the Canon EOS 600D EOS is a small sensor, has the APS-C sensor, the small sensor, but the optics in here is made for full format camera. Um, why, why that? Because the optics for a small sensor are so expensive, it's not worth it. Um, but it also works um, with the difference that I have now, basically a smaller field of view and the crop uh, is, is, is higher. I said, forget about it, who cares? It works fine enough. Um, so what I just wanted to say is, is, is generally larger sensors are better. Uh, you need uh, appropriate optics. However, however, um, maybe it's not necessary to have a larger sensor because the smaller sensor works just fine. Um, I think one should not overthink it and many of the issues that uh, are borderline maybe. And in many cases, the microscope in any case delivers enough light. I understand there might be set, uh, certain um, circumstances, uh, I don't know, very, very fast shutter speeds and um, where it might not be, where you really ha don't have enough light. Um, but generally, 
um, for casual observation and and yeah, it's uh, also the APS-C sensor. I would say is is perfectly okay. Yeah. So um, the pixels, the number of pixels. Also nowadays, I've made another video on this: how to calculate the ideal number of pixels or the minimum number of pixels. And modern DSLR cameras have way way more pixels than what the microscope is able to deliver. Okay. So um, yeah. So it's 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 uh, that that's something that I almost would completely ignore um, because. Yeah, it's uh, the, the modern cameras are so way above uh, what the, the theoretical possibility uh, limits of the microscope are. So um, next question. Um if I had to do it all over again, which camera would you purchase today, 22 years later? Well, the microscope here, the Olympus CH40 that I have here, it was I bought it in 1998, um, together with a photo adapter. And at that time, digital imaging did not exist yet. Um, at least not for the consumer. So I connected a full format, obviously, <laughs> film camera, analog film camera to the microscope. And that was, at that time, the best solution that was available. Yes, uh, at that time they had um, also other analog solutions, like for example, they used video, some kind of, uh, they were similar to video surveillance cameras that you could connect. And then you had an analog, um, yeah, you probably know these things here, yeah? Yeah, you had an analog connector and you could, yeah, and I connected it at that time, um, yeah, to a, to, to, video, uh, to a videotape recorder and so on. Um, so, but at that time there was simply no other realistically feasible solution than to use analog cameras. Um, and then came the time when I, you, people connected webcams. I also did that, uh, do-it-yourself webcam connectors, which also kind of worked. Um, so th essentially the question, would I do everything the same way? I have to admit, I, I, at that time I didn't have any other choice. Nowadays, what would I do nowadays if I had to restart all over again? Well, um, honestly, if you want to have a high quality imaging using video and photographs, uh, DSLRs are still, or, or mirrorless, are still one of those ways to, to go. Um, um, the big uh, four microscope manufacturing companies, um, they have their own imaging solutions for research purposes. So what they will do is, is if you buy a microscope from them and you say you want to have an image, a complete solution from them, which is probably the uh, best uh, adapted system that they have, a camera from them, optics, everything from them, um, it's going to be super expensive um, and then there are certain features available that, I don't know, there, I mean, i would give you an example. I just recently talked to, to a guy for, for, I don't know, half an hour, 45 minutes um, about uh, from one of those companies and he, for, he talked the whole time about uh, the, the, the new imaging system that they have. It's all computer controlled and it was like this that just to show you what they can, these things can do. If you change the objective, okay, um, to a higher magnification, then the light intensity, of course, goes down. But essentially, because the, uh, the, the microscope sends a signal to the camera, the camera automatically ad adjusts the exposure time in such a way that the image is not underexposed. Things like this. Okay, um, so um, these are features that are maybe important, maybe in the research area, nice to have. Um, but the question is, is, is this really something that um, a, a, an amateur uh, microscopist who's doing this as a hobby really needs, okay, um, or wants to have, or is the money not, I don't know, better invested in something else, uh, yeah? So, um, I, I, you see what I mean? I mean, uh, here is, is there is also this law of diminishing returns. Certain features simply make uh, the price uh, very high. Um, and for the very best solution, um, what you have to do is, is you have to get the microscope and also the intermediate optics um, uh, from the same company because what happens is, is that the intermediate optics um, often will compensate uh, the, um, the aberrations the lens areas of the objectives um, and then what I heard nowadays that is that uh, they um, you don't want you want to get away from the optics as well intermediate optics as well because they again reduce contrast so you try to have make a system where essentially the objective projects the image directly to the camera but then the distances have to match and all these things and that's why these ex companies they provide a complete package so if really the best image quality and everything perfect and super and top of the line, if this is what you want to go out for, um, and uh, then and you don't want to leave it up to any experimentation, then you gotta buy something probably from those very high-end companies, and then it's getting really expensive 
really quickly and I would say probably also not necessary for the average amateur to be used um, so and this is I think uh, big, and the times are changing <laughs> nowadays it's it's uh, possible I remember to buy um, low cost uh, relatively low cost DSLR adapters general purpose adapters that you can fit in into pretty much any microscope which might not give you the very very best theoretical um, image quality but which works fine and uh, which is okay yeah Another uh, part that I just want to mention here before I forget, I keep on rambling on now, is, is um, if we focus too much on the camera, then we might forget about other things that are important for image quality. For example, um, if you want to really have very good images, then you have to get planned objectives, which give you an, a sharp image all the way to the, the edges. It drives up the price again of the microscope. Question is, is it really necessary? Yeah. Um, if you want to reduce uh, stray light, you should have a microscope with a Köhler illumination, which is a, a separate uh, optical system right on top of the lens that limits the light only to those this part of the specimen that actually is illuminated, so there's less stray light uh, from the side. Um, if you read, for example, it's kind of also interesting because it's a sim simple things that we don't think about. Um, if you want to improve the image quality, what you have to do is, is you have to put, while you take a video or picture, you have to put on the eye caps on here. Why? Because otherwise there's going to be stray light going in uh, from uh, through the eyepiece and reducing the image quality. Um, so there are so many other things that uh, play a role, the way that the specimen is prepared. Um, sometimes um, it's not the camera but simply if you're using some interesting filters, I don't know, Reinberg filters that give color to it um, or if you um, if something looks kind of boring then you use polarizing filters which makes increases the contrast and makes everything colorful. Um, so it's not the resolution of the camera or the, the clarity or the crispness of the image alone, but also the, the specimen itself, um, which kind of makes a, a video interesting or not. So you see there are so many other things that are independent of the technology um, and uh, independent of the megapixels and, and the resolution aspects, but which are more related to the, um, to the context. Um, and uh, for this reason, um, I would say as a general last comment is don't overthink the purchase of a camera um, maybe get one w which you would feel comfortable with also uh, when um, yeah doing regular photography but I do have a, another uh, recommendation however if you're already buying a camera, and I know it's, uh, some people might disagree now, is um, the, the company Canon and Nikon. Uh, this is basically, these are, cam they have a large set of objectives and many cameras to choose from. And what I found is, is I found it also easier for those uh, companies to obtain so-called T2 adapter rings. And I've seen that many microscope companies that uh, make, uh, make the uh, adapters for them actually will also offer uh, T2 adapters rings for those cameras and if you have now some some I don't know less known camera brand maybe you have to shop around and see if there are adapter rings the t2 adapter rings are those that um, are an interface between the camera and the microscope adapter okay um, I, I'm just saying uh, just saying this I just want to give you another example here which is not a t2 adapter ring but this uh, what I have here is the following I have here a um, this is uh, a, an Olympus mount and this one is a, an adapter ring that converts an Olympus um, to a Canon okay and Canon is a com common brand <laughs> yeah um, and therefore I had no problems getting this here okay um, so I'm just uh, saying this that this might be something that uh, when you shop for a camera that you might also consider this um, at the same time um, is for your camera model or brand are there also appropriate uh, adapter rings available but I think it should also not be a problem so I think enough for today. I wish you all the best. Happy microbe hunting as always. Leave your comments and questions. See you around next time. Bye-bye.